say this. I have the biggest regret in my media career, and Molly, I'm retired. You yeah. did, Shannon, from voting for individual awards, regular season awards, because I have done a disservice in my using my voting rights. Me voting this season for Rudy Gobert, okay, is an embarrassment for me for defensive player of the year. Fan on the defensive end, I think. You think it's a little overrated on that side? Yeah, I definitely think so. Oh, Rudy? Yes. Thank you. Hey, man, say, man. This is the A-Man Show back at it again for more content. Rudy Gobert has been one of the most infamous players in the league, but not in a good limelight. Gobert has been the main culprit of the Timberwolves being the number one defense last year, and somehow, in some way, not just people in the media, but former NBA players do not respect Rudy Gobert at all. And actually, there was a poll that every player took on who was the most overrated player in the game, and Rudy Gobert was ranked number one as the most overrated player in the NBA. So in this video, I'm going to set the record straight about Rudy Gobert because people keep on discounting his DPOYs, and especially in last year's playoffs, where people actually believe he is unplayable, both on the offensive side and defensive side of the ball. So without further ado, I'm going to show you why Rudy Gobert is undoubtedly an all-time great defensive player and one of the most disrespected players in NBA history. But first, make sure y'all subscribe, I post NBA and NFL content, turn on post notifications so that way you don't miss new videos from me. Anyways, stay tuned and enjoy the vid. So ever since Rudy Gobert was drafted 27th overall in the 2013 NBA draft, he went from a project young guy to a generational defensive player. Being one of three players to win DPOY four times, the last two that done it was Dikembe Mutombo and of course Ben Wallace. One of Rudy Gobert's greatest feats as a player is from 2014 all the way to 2022. The Jazz never was lower than a top three defense in the NBA. And in fact, from 2018 to 2022, the Jazz had the best defense in the NBA in two out of the four seasons, despite having shitty perimeter defenders around Gobert. Despite the bad perimeter defense, Rudy Gobert had to defend the most amount of shots at the rim, and he still managed to hold teams to the lowest efficiency from 2020 to 2022. In the 21 season, Rudy Gobert had the highest defensive rinse shares as well as having the lowest defensive rating. And once again, the Jazz had the number one ranked defense that year, and he done it last year with the Timberwolves, where they were, like I said, the number one ranked defense. Now, people are going to go off the limb and say that Rudy Gobert should not even get Defensive Player of the Year because of how overrated he is in the playoffs. First and foremost, guys, the Defensive Player of the Year award is a regular season award, period. And to say that Rudy Gobert is overrated in the playoffs is a far cry because, like I said, Rudy Gobert had to take on the entire defense for the Jazz because of how piss poor the Jazz are at defending the perimeter. Teams can easily make a game plan against this awful defense. Therefore, Rudy Gobert has to take on more responsibilities on guarding the perimeter more, which leads to opening up the rim for the opponent to score much easier, and especially if a team goes into a five-out lineup. The Jazz cannot contain them, and we saw this in Game 6 of the Western Semis against the Clippers in 2021, where Terrace Mann went off for a playoff high of 39 points. A role player. Either way, the Jazz defense was never going to be sustainable in the playoffs because of how poor the perimeter defense was. And that is one of the sole reasons why the Jazz not only never made it out of the second round, but got embarrassed every single time. And hell, in 2018, when Rudy Gobert was off the court, the Jazz were ranked 21st in the NBA defensively. The same year where the Jazz had the number one ranked defense when he was on the court. So based on what I told y'all, this proves right here that Rudy Gobert is not overrated in the regular season and in the playoffs. And then we move forward to last year where he wins his fourth Defensive Player of the Year award. Now many people believe that Wimby should have won the award, but then again the Timberwolves had the best defense in the league 
along with Gobert having the best defensive rating and the highest defensive win shares. And I think this period of Rudy Gobert's career is by far the most tumultuous as far as the hate he's been getting from the NBA. Yeah, sure, him getting a five-year, $205 million deal was too much money, but still, Rudy Gobert is one of the most impactful defensive players of all time. And once he got there in Minnesota, in a matter of two years, they were the best defense in the NBA. And if it weren't for him, the Timberwolves would never make it to the Western Conference Finals since 04. And the playoffs is where I really need to address this matter because last year's playoffs is where the height of the Rudy Gobert hate really happens. People on the internet and even making videos of how horrendous Rudy Gobert is as a defender in the playoffs, especially against the Denver Nuggets. Now looking at game 5 specifically where Jokic had an, another all time great performance, not enough people are giving praise to Jokic's performance but instead is clowning Rudy Gobert on how he was a defensive liability not only in game 5 but for the entire series. And it even got to the point that people actually said that Carl Anthony Towns, a known below average defender was better than Gobert against Jokic and that really pinched a nerve under my skin. First and foremost, before game 5, Rudy Gobert actually held Jokic to 11 of 28 shooting from the field. Yes, 11 of 28 shooting. That's 42% and even got to the point that Gobert held Jokic to 38% from the field in, in the beginning of the series. And yeah, he did get torched against Jokic, but Gobert actually played great defense against him that game. And still, Jokic was able to score over him by making improbable shots. Jokic was just that fucking good that night, and no one from the Timberwolves can stop him. Jokic is an all-time great offensive player, and at the end of the day, it's normal. We have seen plenty of all-time great defensive players get torched against all-time great offensive players. Great offense always beat great defense. Hakeem Olajuwon was cooking dinner against David Robinson in the 95 West Finals. Shaq, the most dominant player ever, barbecued chicken the fuck out of the Kimbe Mutombo in the 01 Finals. And by the way guys, the guys that cooked the defensive players, Mutombo and Robinson, both won Defensive Player of the Year in their respective years. I will use Jokic for another example. He cooked Anthony Davis in both series of the West Finals and in the first round. And against Bam Adebayo, he had an all-time great finals performance, but no one called Adebayo nor Davis defensive liabilities. Hell, this defensive liability name calling has been used so loosely in the NBA community. Do y'all really understand the meaning of calling someone a defensive liability? That means someone who is incapable of guarding anyone and is simply a traffic cone defensively. Like, you want to know who was a defensive liability, especially in this playoffs last year? Josh Giddy, at times Luka Doncic, and at times D'Angelo Russell. For a player like Rudy Gobert to be called such an asinine name of being a defensive liability, I mean a defensive liability, goes to show you that you're a fucking moron and don't know basketball. Gobert was in the right place defensively at the right time and in the right positioning to alter opponent's shots in last year's playoffs, and he did it consistently and exceptionally well. And his impact as far as watching the games and looking at the stats prove it, not only in the Nuggets series, but in the entire playoffs last year. And also the criticism of him being torched against elite level big men, don't y'all realize that Gobert has to take more responsibility on guarding the perimeter, meaning that he has to be in a lean weight for him to be quick enough on his feet to guard perimeter players as well as guard the post. And in the playoffs, you deal with a big fella like Jokic who is 40 pounds heavier or a Joel Embiid, hell, even a Giannis onto the Kumpo. I think it's kind of unfair for guys like Rudy Gobert to be criticized so much off of his ability to guard elite big men like Jokic while guarding the perimeter at times. I mean, what more you want Rudy Gobert to do? And in matter of fact, Gobert is doing this better than any other big man in this league besides Bam at the bio. And as for the Maverick series, where yet again, people criticize Gobert for being a defensive liability, when in actuality, everyone in the perimeter was getting cooked by Kyrie and Luka and the fact that Minnesota went drop covers against the Mavericks, that gave both Kyrie and Luka to collapse the defense and find open guys for lobs and shooters. Gobert has done the best he can individually. It really has to do with 
Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards shooting abysmal from the field and just not showing up when needed. And also the coaching staff fault for not being prepared to face the Mavericks. So this Rudy Gobert hates to me is really fucking stupid because this man has proven that he is a generational floor raiser on the defensive side of the ball and can be the same in the playoffs when put in the right position. No one in NBA history can carry a defense like Rudy Gobert. Out of all the defensive guys in the NBA, Gobert has proven that he is the best player to defend one of the most unguardable players in NBA history in Nikola Jokic. That right there proves why Rudy Gobert is not only the best defensive player in the NBA, but he is among the conversation of one of the greatest defensive players in NBA history. Yes, history. And if you don't acknowledge that, then you should neck yourself. And all of the media owes an apology for Rudy Gobert, especially Shaq, Kendrick Perkins, and most especially Draymond Green. Hell, I'm gonna put it out there. Since Kendrick Perkins thinks he can do a better job defending Jokic, you were averaging four fouls per game against the Lakers in the 2010 finals. You were in foul trouble literally every game trying to guard Powell Gasol. And actually, Kevin Garnett did the majority of the work guarding that man. And not to mention, you're a former Shaq in the Fool MVP, but I digress. Draymond Green thinks he can do a better job defending Jokic than Gobert. Let's see how much Jokic averaged in the first round when guarded by Draymond. Yeah, that's right. And by the way, he had three straight games in that series of four or more fouls and even got fouled out in game four. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. All I'm saying here, guys, is that this Rudy Gobert hate needs to die down because all of these narratives about him on the defensive side of the ball are just flat out false. And sure, you can criticize his offensive game as well as the contract. But the one thing you cannot criticize is his defense and the people, including the players that are calling him trash, liability, defensively, all that. You all are the reason why NBA discourse is dead in 2024. So thank you all for watching this vid. Is the Rudy Gobert hate unjustified? Because I clearly think it is. Let me know in the comment section below. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more NBA and NFL content in the future and turn on post notifications. And that is all. Stay litty. This is the A-Man Show. Sign out.